the Noxie and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Kara L. M. Ard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Welcome back to the Noxie and Cax Show brought to you by SDPN and the PWHPA. I'm Liz Knox. This is Carol Amard. We are Noxie and Cax. And today we're excited to introduce to you Olympian, world champion, locker room DJ, and our first actual goalie, Javier Lacasse. Jen, Woo! thanks for joining us. How is that French? Is that all right? That's pretty good. You're pretty yeah. good at French. What do you mean? I'm learning. Official goalie, though. Well, uh, ee, I, it's coming Maxi? from me. So it's, it's true. <laughs> Um, so let's get started here quickly for those who maybe haven't been watching ho- women's hockey the last year. Um, of course, Cax and I have, and we noticed your absence. Uh, talk to us a little bit about kind of what your last year has been like, what you've been going through and kind of where you are maybe in your recovery process. Yeah. So, uh, last year was playing, you know, PWHPA, COVID, all that. And then, uh, we had world's camp. Worlds got canceled and then they had to name the centralization roster. And unfortunately I got cut um, from that roster. So it wasn't on the team. Um, You know, at the end of the day, just wasn't good enough to make the team. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the future, if I do decide to keep playing, whatever it is that I can make my way back onto the team or whatever, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to take this time to, to get healthy. Um, You know, I've been playing through a lot of, different injuries and pain and stuff like that. My back, um, my shoulder. So got everything checked out. Um, and turns out that I had a labrum injury in my shoulder. So, um, decided to get surgery in December. Um, so yeah, recent, I'm yeah, recent two months, uh, post-op right now, it'll be about a four to six month full, full recovery. So, um, just taking the time to, to get my body healthy and my back feels great. I'm working out physio, such, such a great support system around me. So um, no hockey for me this year, but uh, hopefully in a couple months here, I can get back on the ice. And I, I don't know how that felt, but uh, maybe just knowing what you had and how you could fix it shoulder wise. Cause I feel like you had this kind of like ongoing pain or whatnot for the past years so you know you have the plan ahead you're kind of focusing on that like how has it been to just i feel like when you know and you have a solution and you you have a direction it's a bit different too and and i don't know how you feel but it seems like you're you're upbeat and you're you're ready to go and get back at it too yeah yeah it's it's just crazy you know when you're playing hockey you're being a goalie there's so much stress on your body and we're just going through the grind day to day and you're in the gym and you're just kind of trying to do what you can do to kind of get to the next day and get to the next practice and the next game. So, um, you know, getting cut, you know, as much as I would like to be at the Olympics right now, kind of a blessing in disguise to, right. to be able, it took all the way till, um, November where I had one week where at the end of the week, I was like, wow, like I didn't feel any pain this week. Like I wasn't oh, that's crazy this week. And Like I just felt like rejuvenated. And at that point, that's where I was like, well, maybe I do want to, you know, get back on the ice and stuff like that. But then had my shoulder surgery shortly after, but, um, I've definitely felt like I'm can sleep less and have more energy, just not having that pain with my back and shoulder. And yeah, the rehab, there's definitely some pain in neck and all of that, but (laughs) it's weird because the more I move now, the less pain that I have. So before it was like, the more I move, the more pain. Now, the more I'm moving, the more I do, the less pain. So it's kind of sick. Cool. Well, that's, that's so great to hear. And very like Jack Campbell of you to speak so candidly about being uh, what I would say released temporarily from the team. You know, this, uh, for those listeners at home that don't really <laughs> understand how the national team process works, uh, it's very rarely, is it a definitive, like you're right. done, you're out of the program. There's Constantly, they're trying out new players. Uh, the position of goaltender is especially hard to reach. I know for myself, um, and you know, very, very candid of you to speak so um, you know humbly about it. But you have fans in us. We know that you're capable of the comeback, and we're excited to see your journey back into the game. So, speaking of being humble, let's take it way back. <laughs> this is how uh, Jen and I first met. I, I, I believe it was how we first met was at the Jana Hefford Laurie Dupuy Hockey Camp. And of course, we were both counselors at the camp. Uh, this was back in, I guess it would have been probably the summer of 2013. Because I, I think you were training for Sochi. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Well, we would have met before that, Liz, because um, I was at the under 22 camp. And Just a young buck. <laughs> 2009, in 2009, I got brought into the under 22 Whoa. camp as the fifth goalie. So it that's was, right. It was you and Kessler. Um, uh, who's the Mercyhurst goalie? I'm trying to remember. Oh, oh uh, Pattenden. Laura. Pattenden oh, and Hill, Laura. Hill Pattenden. Yeah. yeah. Laura was the other one. And I was the fifth goalie. So I was skating with Team Red and Team White. And <laughs> Charlie Labonte had gotten hurt with the centralization team. So I was skating with the Olympic team too. So I was actually on the ice like almost six hours in a row. Like just a utility just, goalie, just yeah. pushing her wherever they needed her. <laughs> I, mean, I was so bad. Like I could barely do it like from one face off dot to another T push. Like I didn't know how to do it. Right? So, <laughs> Somehow someone saw something in me and brought me to that camp. Um, well, I'd be willing to bet it was work ethic because you literally just were any, anywhere and everywhere that they needed you to be. And as I was saying, like, I, I would like to take some credit for that because when we did get back to training at the Dupuy Hefford hockey camp, Laura Mack and I, you know, we put you through a really rigorous training sit- regime, if yeah, you will. Hear about this. You got me ready for boot camp. Like, I, I like to leave. So why don't you tell the, the listeners how I was your personal trainer for yeah, a well, week? <laughs> so, so they really made sure that I got the most out of our training when we're at the Dupuy Hefford hockey school. We only work half days, which is wonderful so that we can train the other half of the day. <laughs> and so we went to work in the morning, in the afternoon, we get back to our place. Oh, let's, let's go out on the lake. Let's go paddleboard and uh, pedal boat. And so you got Mac and Noxie in the, the paddle boat and I'm on my paddle board and they're crushing a couple beers in there. And then, Oh, look, Cass, why don't you just pull us around? So tie the rope <laughs> to my paddle board. No way. <laughs> I'm paddle boarding and they're literally just sitting back there sipping on some brews. And, uh, that was quite I remember fun. taking a picture with Laura Mac, just being like, this is when, you know, you're at the turning point in your career. Like Jen's just pulling our two asses around with a case of beer <laughs> and she's just in prime shape. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. That's some core workout and cardio too. Like that's big. Seriously. Seriously. That was amazing. I owe a lot to you too. (laughs) How long did you pull them for? Like how hours? Oh, jeez. Around the lake. God. (laughs) This was not a like five minute little journey. It was hours. Yeah. And and the only reason we went back was we're like, hey, uh, Jen, we're we're out of beers. So we're going to have to take it back real fast here. (laughs) Well, hey, it felt a lot lighter by that point, though. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks to them. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The other thing that we have in common, sorry, Cax, I'm stealing the the show. I love it. I'll let you have your your questions later. Um, Another thing that we have in common is, we actually both wore the number 27 uh, in our college days and a little, I wore it a little bit after you wore it more after. Can you tell us about why, why that number? Why 27? Well, I wore like a million different numbers growing up. It was basically whatever they had, they gave me. Um, and then I got to college, get to pick my number. So I was like, I want something that's a little bit different, not necessarily a goalie number. And I uh, thought it was cool. It looked good on the back of a jersey. Like it did. My name, 27. It looked cool. So I, I got that. Um, and then when I actually went with the national team, I was like, put your three favorite numbers. So I was like, well, 27. Obviously. And, and I was like, oh, 29 is a cool number, but like not even thinking. Oh, <laughs> that's cool number. That's stupid. <laughs> and then I think I'd put um, 30, I think. I'm not even sure. And then. I got a jersey and it was 31 and I was like, well, cool. I guess I'll keep 31. <laughs> yeah. It's got so the right logo it. on the front. So I'll take it. <laughs> really care less than that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. It fit well, the 27, the name looked perfectly. Um, on that note and all about style and where you're going, I mean, you're already we- wearing kind of a stylish uh, hoodie here and everything. Um I w- I'm surprised you're not wearing something super colorful as a hat or something. Maybe a dolphin. We'll talk about that um, later. But on that note, like we were just talking about Olympic swag uh, right before we came on here. And, and uh, we, I've been loving every single pieces of Lululemon uh, that the girls have got this year. And, and um, what, like, what do you think of it to start us off with? And then after that, with every single pieces that you've received so far in your career, where or which one was the worst piece you you kind of got <laughs> and then also your favorite one so i want to go in that kind of like <laughs> angle here 
The I mean, the Lulu swag is unreal. Like, no offense to HBC, like the last two Olympics, I got some some really nice swag, but like, there's only so much you can do with like cotton and those types of materials. And yeah, the Lulu stuff, like we all know, it's just so comfortable and so awesome. Um, definitely wish I made the team for the swag. <laughs> Uh, I'll definitely be stealing some of that stuff from some of the girls, but it looks amazing. Like it's just the jackets look so nice. And oh man, I like, I like too that right now it's like matching fits are, are in I, stuff. Like I have the matching sweats to this, wearing them together looks good. And I think there's some leggings that are kind of like darker red and brighter red, and then yeah. they got the matching shirt and everything. So that's, it's pretty swaggy. I love yeah. The it. fits look they're good. Like, yeah. They look so good. We got a ton too. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll be trying to steal some as well too. <laughs> <laughs> we got some contacts. <laughs> I'll ask my bestie. We'll see. <laughs> um, and then what about, what about yours? Like, let's say you touched on what you received too. And then, okay, let's go with yeah. your favorite. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh man. Um, there was a cool hat, I think. I think it's 2014. We got kind of like the red hat where it was like a lace. It was kind of like an old school kind of like felt looking hat, Ooh, which was okay. kind of cool. It, like it an Indiana like, Jones style hat, like a, like a, with a brim or was it, it like, no, it was like, it was like just a front brim, but not really like a ball cap. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it had like, like, you know, when there's the ear flaps, but it yep. had the ear flaps to the front. Ah, uh, yeah. I know the hat you're talking about now. I that was a pretty cool hat. Um, just super unique. And I remember growing up, like seeing those roots hats from the, yeah. yeah. and like <laughs> kind yeah. of just the felt, like the material reminded me of that. And when I was a kid, I always wanted one of those roots hats and I never got one. Um, <laughs> so kind of, kind of so instead I decided I'll just go to the Olympics and get my own. <laughs> Childhood trauma will make you do crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Oh my gosh. Love and, that. and then do you have something that you like kind of look back on? We don't need to put brand names on it, maybe, no. but do you have something you look back on? You're like, wow, that was such a, such a thing at the time. Like we, I mean, we've all lived through the nineties. So we all have some select fashion choices. What about you, Jen? Did you get anything like national team wise? Like, well, you guys have been on the team. You guys know, like some of the apparel that we get is questionable. Um, <laughs> there's definitely sometimes we get stuff that's like a little bit more girly than I would like it to be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's free. So at the end of the day, I'm like, I'll find a friend to give it to. Um, it's true. But on, on that note, I actually was talking to Tanya. This was a few years ago. One of our kind of managers and I said, Hey, can we start an apparel committee? So I started an apparel committee. So I was on the committee and then they brought in Raj because Raj is more <laughs> the conservative. So I was yeah. more the like <laughs> colorful bag colors. <laughs> and then Raj was like, Oh, this golf item looks nice. And like, <laughs> this, uh, like way more conservative, you know, right. like she was way into the, the Nike golf stuff. And then, um, I think Pooh was on it too, but she was just so busy and probably didn't check her texts. So she, uh, <laughs> she wasn't, she was a part of the committee, but she, she wasn't really looking at the stuff as much, but uh, we definitely got a couple more swaggier items through that, I think. And then Spooner ended up doing it a little bit too. So things got a bit more girly again. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It, honestly, it's so balance. funny because like, as we get into talking about the culture of women's sport and when women's hockey, like there are girls who want to have like the fitted tees that are hourglass shaped with short t-shirt sleeves on them. And then there are others that don't. And you know what? There's space for all of us. I love that you always have like your own style on things. So I do want to switch a little bit. We want to talk about a little bit about your pads because yeah. your like your pads have always been top notch. I remember when you were in Providence, you had like the all silver kind of grayish ones. Um, we were just talking about your last set with the national team with the plaid nod. Uh, talk us through some of your pad choices and kind of like how do you design these things? What are you looking for? Yeah, well. I've been super lucky with Bauer the last couple of years. Like they can literally just make, like they could put my dog on my pad. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. to see that. <laughs> yeah. But the plaid pads actually came to me in a dream, believe it or not. Um, oh, okay. I, I had a dream that I had plaid, like full plaid pads on. 
And I woke up the next morning and I texted my equipment uh, guy, Bauer Lee. And I was like, oh my God, I had a dream, like plaid pads, whatever. And then it was a couple months later designing new pads and he sends me a few graphics and things. And one of them had plaid on them. Come on. Like, no way. We're going with the plaid pads, like for sure. So that is amazing. Yeah. And then I had my red pads before that had mini hockey Canada logos all over that. Um, I was with nurse on the bus and we we're talking about <laughs> Louis Vuitton. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, what if I had Louis Vuitton pads. And she was like, Oh my God. Yeah. So then that's how those pads came to be. They're Louis Vuitton inspired, um, Hockey Canada, Hockey Canada pads. pads. Yeah, That's incredible. It. Talked to the one of the Bauer designers and he made it happen, sent a couple designs. And uh, yeah, I it's love that. A way to like express myself. Um, I never had matching equipment till I got to university. We grew up, you know, we were middle class and not a lot of money. Um, just lucky to play hockey. I worked at a hockey store through high school to pay for gear. Like I rarely got a paycheck because it would just, <laughs> I needed a new helmet or a new glove. So I had, I think my last year I had a black, red and white helmet. I had yellow and black gloves and I had white, orange, black pads. Um, I love that. Just you know what? Like complete mismatch. Um, but it was like, I couldn't afford to get everything new every year. So I'd get something new one year, two, three years later, get something else. And um, so I think once I got to college, I just kind of went crazy and like, yeah. Honestly, that's a great message because we both, all three of us know that hockey is a very expensive sport. It's no surprise yeah. to anybody. And especially if your child or yourself decides to become a goalie, like it's, a, you just tripled or, or quadrupled your budget. Right. Yeah. So I was the same way growing up. Like I never had matching anything. I was always like, strangely self-conscious about it because I would see other goalies who had all black DR pads at the time. And I was like, you know, like I I'm not, I'm not that, like, I don't look that good. And you know, my parents, same thing. We're just like, well, it's what you do with it. You work hard. And when you get to the, you know, the level that you want to be at, you'll have plenty of opportunity to design your own pads. So I love that message. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for sharing that little bit about your, your childhood. Absolutely. You talk about those black dr and like being embarrassed there was one one point the most embarrassed of my gear is my mom worked at a hospital and one of her co-workers her son was a goalie and uh my glove just like i was getting bruised hands and everything so we bought his old glove and i get this glove and it's like battered old von glove but in it he had named this glove the vacuum like it had like sharpie <laughs> in it, the vacuum <laughs> and so i love actually, that it was an absolute vacuum of a glove, like so broken in and I wasn't getting bruised on my hand anymore, but that I forgot about that piece of equipment until like, you were just talking there. That's, That's amazing. amazing. That's amazing. We, we do that at, like as players too, but we, we get like our hand-me-downs from cousins or like, you know, and then you get to finally choose your skates or like, we don't get to design anything. I did. I got a, I didn't get that love. I guess I could have potentially designed a helmet. I don't even know what we <laughs> could have done, but um, talking about the, the vacuum, I, I, do you think that, okay, when did you actually get the glove? How old were you ish? It would have been like 11, 12, probably. Okay. It's early on. I, I was like, Oh my God, did that glove get you to, you know, Providence basically? Like, is it <laughs> the spirit of the vacuum lived on? <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it really did to be honest, looking at your career and everything you've I pretty much broke every single records over there, but, um, no, I, I, I maybe I was going to give the guy a shout out, you know, the vacuum became the Jen LaCasse style. <laughs> the reason, no, I think I had TPS gloves before going to Providence. Oh so. yeah. Those are classic too. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. So I just like, you went to Providence, um, you chose that school. Um, talk to us a little bit about the a little bit about the process leading up to that kind of choice that you made, uh, maybe a couple of visits or whatever that you did before to other universities. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then we'll, and then we'll chat about your career there for sure. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, I, I was in school in Kingston. I finished grade 11. I had one letter it was from U of T. Like I had gotten one letter, finished grade 11. And then I knew I wanted to go to school in the States. Like I thought I was good enough, but hadn't gotten any attention. So I repeated grade 11, went to a prep school in Chicago. And that year I managed to talk to the Providence coach and I talked to a few coaches and then left, went to Detroit, played for little Caesars for a year. And then all of a sudden I had like 10 or 12 offers on the line. And that's when I was talking to the 
Wisconsin and St. Lawrence and um, Duluth and all that. And then I settled on Providence, Wisconsin and St. Lawrence were my final three options. So I decided to do an official <laughs> visit to all of them. Um, my visit at Wisconsin was pretty uneventful, honestly. <laughs> like I just felt super overwhelmed with the size of the campus, yeah. but I did want to go there to get a scooter. Like <laughs> <laughs> That was like the only reason I wanted to. Go it was there. a thing. They all had that red, like not a Vespa, but a red. Like just the athletes, athletes like, or, or like everybody, like every student gets a scooter. How does this work? A lot of the athletes, I think, like, yeah. all have scooters to get around to like practice and all their classes. And they just and rip around. On, like, it's not like a pedal scooter. It's like. No. <laughs> Legit, and they would I would have taken a pedal scooter. They, they, <laughs> would, they would buy it down from like other players, right? So you graduate and you just sell it to yeah. a newbie that's coming in or something. But yeah, you get they would I get not you guys, but they would ride to games like in their like <laughs> like a little scooter gang yeah, dress outfit just going. <laughs> Come on. Like, that's the yeah. reason I wanted to go to Wisconsin. <laughs> you know what? That actually I believe because that is, that would be a selling point for me for too. Sure. <laughs> for sure, that's so awesome. Um, and then I went on a visit to St. Lawrence where Kex was at school. Proud alumni yeah. were there. I absolutely loved it there. Like kind of feels like Canada. You're kind of big dog on campus, um, old barn. And I had a blast on my visit. Um, yeah, the, the players dropped me off with some of their friends and fans and they were like, Hey, take bring care of her, bring her to the game. Like they had an exhibition game against McGill and I was like, okay, I get in there. They're like crushing beers with me. They're like, let's go, let's get you drunk. I'm like, okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> we never did that. Come on. We didn't tell them to do that. We just said, have fun. Show this girl a good time. Yeah. And then they take me to the game. Like I'm pretty loaded. I had to go to the locker room in between periods, yep. to, like listen to the coach speak and stuff, but their fans, they had brought, they had like this air guitar that they would like pretend to be playing, but the thing had booze in the guitar. Like, there was a straw that came out of the car and we could drink out of it. So we're drinking at the game too. Um, and then Doesn't surprise uh, me. Yeah. And then we end up going to a party after playing beer pong. One thing they really was, showed you a good time. I mean, that would have sold a, me. I'll be honest. It's <laughs> a good visit. So Max then they, was in charge of me. And at some point Kex lost me because Oh no. For some reason Why? I decided to jump out of a window and <laughs> Exactly. I'm a runner. I'm a runner. Who does that? We got a runner. <laughs> We've got a runner. You know those video they put like a, a kid's bag, like whatever with a leash. I should have had that for Jen that night. Like <laughs> she just she jumped oh out the window God. and I'm like sitting there. I'm like, do I jump? Like <laughs> <laughs> am I going after her? Like, holy. Yeah. Um oh, I'm, that's I'm, amazing. Yeah, yeah that was, was uh, fun. It was a great visit. One of the things that did mark me was that I came into one of the girls' rooms with her and she's like, oh no, the damn squirrel was in my room again. <laughs> I'm like, what? She's like, the squirrel keeps eating through the screen and he pissed on my on my <laughs> desk again, like on my papers. And there's literally like a little pee on the desk. Like, yeah. yeah I th- <laughs> what is this place? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, St. Lawrence is in that, um, up north, like, okay, North Country, New York State. Like, upstate, yeah. Upstate New York, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, we have nature uh, all around <laughs> campus. I guess these girls were uh, very uh, present. Um, yeah, that was Carly, I think, Carly Shields. That's yeah. wild. Okay, yeah. so you, you, d- yeah. you end up deciding on Providence, right? Then, yeah, I love, like, I love the fit of Providence. We had a goalie coach every day. That was, like, a huge thing for me. Yeah. So there was no goalie coach. So I was like, <laughs> how am I going to get better? Like... <laughs> I, I'm not very accountable to myself. I need someone else to be accountable for me. Yeah. I need a goalie coach. I had one every single day at Providence, which no programs had. Um, so yeah, I decided on Providence. That's Absolutely amazing. And loved it. sorry to, sorry to cut you off there. Um, but you did go on to captain at Providence. Is that right? Yeah. I did. So yeah. you wore, so you, unique situation for a goalie to wear a seat. Clearly you had matured a lot since you, <laughs> Jumped Since out you jumped out the window, window at SLU. Um, so maybe talk to us, like, what was that like? And I, I think the, the interesting thing about wearing a C as a goalie is, like, the obvious that you can't just go down to the other end of the ice and, and talk to the refs, right? So did you guys have somebody else that also wore a C, or how did that work? Were you just that yeah. stud of a standout leader that they were like, oh, she's, she's earned it, this is what we're going to do? No, so myself and uh, my best friend from school, Jen Friedman, we were both uh, co-captains. 
And then my junior year is I was actually assistant captain too. That's um, amazing. So I got to wear the A and the C, which was like such, such a huge honor. I mean, you never dream of that as a kid, like you're a goalie, like you'd never even think yeah. that's going to be possible, but in college um, it is possible. So it's, I don't know. It's just uh, such a huge honor to Jen, be. Jen, I think, I think that speaks volume of like what you did there for Providence. And then that was my, you know, first question there is like, to me at playing against uh, you guys are during the time that you were at Providence, like you put Providence a little bit more, if not on the map itself, like, mm -hmm. Um, you may not want to brag about it or anything, but the amount of records that you broke and, and, uh, the saves, uh, that you make in the, the, in the tournament, I think you have a record for that too. 127 saves. I think, I believe I saw at some point, like, I just need the listeners to understand, like you stood on your head for a ton of games. And, and, um, I think that's why you got the C and the A's and the leader that you became there and talk, talk to us a little bit about your time at Providence and, you know, where you were as a team to where it ended to uh, yeah. your senior year. Yeah. I mean, it's like such a legendary program at Providence and that's, I feel like it's kind of lost a bit of that, like over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, just, um, yeah, like it, it, they were one of the first program, you know, they won back in the day. It was like Providence and New Hampshire. Those were like the two, yeah. you know, the big schools. And now we have kind of those, those, bigger Wisconsin and you know the the huge UBC, powerhouses the, yeah, right Minnesota. like it's hard to convince someone to go to Providence when you have someone offering Wisconsin on the table too like I get it they have scooters like <laughs> exactly like, <laughs> you could, the only way you could be with scooters is with the goalie coach <laughs> um, but yeah I just we came in a huge class I think there was 11 of us in my class we ended up graduating nine of us ended up graduating two uh one stopped playing, one transferred out. Um, but our class, we, we had so many kind of key players that came in really strong, yeah. a lot of goal scorers and stuff like that. So it was a bit tough our first year, like the, the older classes were not too happy that we kind of came in and like I disrupted um, the starting goalie that was there the year before. And now I kind of was the starter after a few weekends. And then the other girls in my class were starting lineup and stuff like that. So it disrupted, yeah. but it eventually um, settled down once we actually had a dry season my freshman year. That was a, a terrible idea. That would have been enough for me to leave Providence. Oh, <laughs> it, it, two, of the girls, two of the girls in our class got in trouble the first two weekends. Wow, of that's why. Mm. That's why. Drinking. Yeah. There are rules me. for a reason. Wasn't me. Um, <laughs> and there was one, there was one weekend where we were playing BU. I don't know. If we, BU was a Sunday game. I don't know who the Saturday game was, but our coach said, if you guys sweep this weekend, like you can go out. And we were like, oh, we're sweeping. Like, there's no way we're not sweeping this weekend. <laughs> Ultra moti motivated. Then. Oh, yeah. We swept and like we were celebrating so hard. And I think like half the team ended up puking that night. It was oh, just not a good, like no one drank the whole year. And then all of a sudden you're telling like 20. One year, everyone was 21. <laughs> 20 yes, yeah, was go out. legal age, everything was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. We, we had such a tight knit group, um, and we got so close. Like, I don't know if you guys saw. So, my, my senior year, we win the quarterfinals to go into Hockey East. I yeah. got a shout out. We win the semifinal. We beat um, Northeastern, I think, one nothing or two nothing. That was against Florence Schelling, which her and I had crazy oh, yeah. throughout she, college we she won. was also we, legendary um, I, I think it was my senior game uh it was zero zero we went to like the 13th shooter and shootout and then we ended up winning one of our d scored on the 13th shooter and shootout which was just insane that's amazing that's, that's yeah. awesome it was so, crazy um, so actually it's funny to say florence shelling too because she was one of my goalie partners in brampton when we were in the cwhl which at the time, I think you probably would have been in Boston, right? You started yeah. on the Boston Blades. Yeah. And then you played, how many years were you in Boston? I was in Boston for, I think I played in Boston for three or four years. Okay. And then you came up to Montreal. And then I went to Calgary for- You were in Calgary first. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. I forgot. You're yeah. just the C-Dub suitcase here, eh? <laughs> I only should, only had Brampton left to play for. 
That would have been a ride. Okay. So tell us maybe like some fond memories or like a fond memory of your time in the CWHL or the PWHPA. Oh, see, I mean, CWHL was a blast, like traveling those weekends. There was uh, one year, I mean, I was teammates with a bunch of the, the American girls, which always made it fun when we'd go in and play against them. But um, playing with Molly Shouse for a year was amazing. Just learning from her. And we had a routine kind of every week. She played the first game of every weekend. I played the second game and, you know, we're traveling every weekend and, uh, her and I had a blast. Um, yeah, like, and then, I mean, getting to play with Brittany Ott, who I was goalie partners with in uh, high school when we played for little Caesars, we were goalie partners. Oh, no kidding. That's wild. Getting to play with her again in Boston was just awesome. We always just, it's just hockey is just a fun, fun thing. Like those years were just fun. And even playing in Boston, like we went from winning the Clarkson cup one year to then losing all of our U S players to the other league. Yes. And we went, uh, we went from, I don't know how many wins to, we won one game in shootout, but and honestly, <laughs> probably saying, against Brampton. <laughs> I think it was Toronto actually. <laughs> and you probably faced like a hundred shots a game or something oh, too. Crazy. Like, my nutritionist that year was like, you need to stop at McDonald's. Cause I was losing weight like crazy. Cause I was facing so many shots. Every she was like, you need to stop at McDonald's get a milkshake and a burger and fries and then eat your normal meal when you get home. Jeez. And then on Mondays when you're recovering like double breakfast and like all this, it was wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I-, I will tell you my fondest memory playing against you, uh, as- like it was kind of hockey aside, but we were out in Calgary and it was the second period. So I was down kind of in the Calgary end and, you know, like I'm old school. So I pull out the old like sweep check. Like I, I full on like hand is at the top of the handle and I just like wrap it around the net. I got puck, which is great. Um, but the girl <laughs> stepped on like the paddle of my stick. And when I went to go play the puck, the next play, my stick just like shattered in half. <laughs> and I was like, shit. And I'm looking around because like we played CW, we didn't get, we didn't for get free. <laughs> so I was like, I only brought one stick. I don't, I don't have a stick. And so I'm like kind of looking around and, and like was, uh, uh, you know, on the bench that day. And I can't remember who your goalie partner, maybe it was Delaney Bryan at the time. It doesn't really matter, but uh, yeah, like is on the bench and I like kind of, you know, uh, goalies do their like routine, like ca- skating around in between whistles. And I'm like, like ass, I don't have a stick. <laughs> and like runs to like the, their little dressing room or the tunnel there and grabs one of her sticks and just hucks it over the glass to me and just, or over the boards. And it's like, here, like, just, just keep it. It's fine. Like I've got, you know, I've got a few, you were at the national team at the time. So yeah. uh, it was a funny story that, yeah, like it kind of highlighted the, a little bit of the inequality that we were facing at the time. But again, like amazing to see players stepping up for each other. So I do appreciate you for that. I owe you one stick. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep it. I like, I've got, I've got <laughs> she yeah, has it on her that, wall. That's she pro needs- hockey at its finest. Like we have some crazy CW stories where it's the national anthems playing and then just starts cutting out in the middle. And it's like, all right, I guess we'll finish singing the national anthem or you show up, there's no refs or like, yeah, we're playing pro hockey. Like, yep. We'll just make do. It's fine. The one guy from the beer league that played ahead of us is like, I'll stay out. <laughs> Guys like pushing 300 pounds. Like, but like, we're going to have to get the defib on the ice in about five minutes. <laughs> Stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we will talk a little bit. Let's talk about hockey again, I guess. Um, how did you get, or how do you get into the zone? Because we know that goalies yeah. are like a little bit odd and we all kind of have our quirks. So what would you say is like, if you can tell, you know, what is kind of a routine or something that you've just like fell back on the last few years to really help you dial in before a game? Yeah. I like, I like to go out, to the ice a little bit early, like a minute before we kind of do to go out there. And I just kind of put my head down and there's little sayings that I say to myself, like my puck, my net, my crease, this is my team. This is my game, my period. Like just say that. that. And like, just like, even just saying now, like it brings me butterflies. And like, for me, like my energy level needs to be like, up, like eight or nine. Like a lot of people, a lot of goalies are like, just chill vibing. I'm like, Woo, like, <laughs> let's go right like i think a lot of it comes to me having that adhd that like i want to feel those highs like i feel highs and i feel lows but like not much in between you know so, um <laughs> keep it up yeah so 
I get my adrenaline going, feel butterflies. Like I love feeling nervous. Like it's the best feeling in the world. And that's why I, I feel like I love big games. I love that, that adrenaline, that gut feeling. Um, that's yeah. so funny. Like, I, I don't know how it is for players, Cax, but like, I was always the opposite. I was like, play me some John Mayer. Let's just bring that heart rate down to 40 and let me just chill here. Like if I was up, 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 I was just like, like I couldn't focus almost like, oh, no. and maybe that was, you know, maybe that works for some people. I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, amazing. no, I need to be on the hyper side too. And really? I'm, oh yeah. I need to, I can't manage my own energy or whatever, but I need to be hyped up and yeah. Well, Jenna, let's like, let you crush like six Red Bulls before. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. It's usually one during the whole game. <laughs> Jesus. No, but uh, yeah, I like to keep it uh, high, even on the bench or stuff like I Sometimes I can't sit. Like I need to like oh, come gosh. up, up. And then, uh, yeah, I get going. And that's why I'm the energy player too, guys. Like it's so <laughs> what's the music yeah. of choice then? Like, cause you're clearly not listening to John Mayer. Like I was no, yeah. I, I like house music, like okay. some rapper house music. I like Mac Miller a lot. Like it's just kind of like gets into a flow vibe, but I think for Cax and I like pretty sure Cax also has ADHD. <laughs> yeah. Just never diagnosed, never diagnosed yet or not, but there's a with ADHD, it's like a superpower. I call it like my hyper focus. Like, like we yeah. can hyper focus more than a normal person can. So like I can get way deeper in my zone than anyone else can. So it's my superpower. And for me to get into my zone, it's like it's that. I love that. That's, That's yeah. such a positive way to talk. Exactly. Like use it to your advantage, right? And like, especially when we get into sports psychology, like you're looking for that sweet zone. And it's different for everybody. Like it's 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 there's no right or wrong. It's figuring out what's gonna work for you, right? So it's I mean, obviously you found that out at a pivotal point in your career and made the most of it. Um I wanna ask you, because we're talking about goalies and we're all different, I wanna ask you about some of your goalie partners. Um, maybe like you could throw, you, you know what, just, just whoever comes to mind, who's the weirdest goal you've ever played with the weirdest or even little things for like each I of mean, them. If you have a few, like my, my, I'll say my favorite goalie trio would have been, um, Howie mash and myself, um, we played <laughs> four nations together and had a couple camps, different things together. And like, like we get pretty weird. Um, Howie, <laughs> Howie and I especially. Yeah, I know. I know you're a big fan of Howie too. Of course, um, I love getting weird with Howie. It's just, it's just great. That's you get on the same level, pretty much. Oh, same yeah. joke, same everything. Oh. Well, yeah, and it's like it's not even just on the ice. It's like shower time's a good time. Yeah. The locker <laughs> room, like. like yeah, yeah, yeah. I just look back on my career and I'm like, what are some of the like most fun times? And most of it's not even on the ice, right? It's like the locker room, the showers, the, the bus, but like, yeah. Yeah. Howie like, is a good, she's a good locker room presence. She is. I don't know if the showers is an appropriate thing. To talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like, if you, if you didn't know, we all shower. It's okay. <laughs> but we do shower. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you have good conversations in there, you know? Usually. It's all about the combos for sure. You're unpacking a lot of uh, emotion from the game. Okay, so let's get yeah. to some of our quick questions. And then we're going to play a little game called Which Teammate Would You Call? So, yeah. Well, let's bounce back and forth, Cox. I'll go first one. Okay. Well, I kind of already answered that. Any superstitions yeah. before a game? Um, I don't let anybody drink out of my water bottle. Yeah, Ooh. don't touch that shit. Didn't know that. Uh, a hidden talent. Uh, I can play the ukulele. Hey, let's start a band. Um, what was the show you last been binge watched? Uh, Narcos Mexico. Love it. Um, nice. most used app on your phone right now. Most used. Oh, bet three, six, five. I was going to say oh. <laughs> been, uh, dabbling in the sports gambling. Uh, <laughs> And then dogs or cats? Easy one. Dogs. No question. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Now, which teammate would you call? Okay. Take your time. This can be national or non-national team member. Yeah. Think the answer's through. Which teammate would you call if you needed somebody to keep a secret? Keep a secret? Boy. 
you know, maybe MASH because she was holding a secret from me about a teammate dating someone else for a really long time for like a year until they were having a secret relationship. Not too <laughs> And she kept it from me for over a year. And I was like, are you kidding me? She yeah. is the secret keeper. Well, she is she a good secret. Keep a keeper. secret if you tell her to. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Which teammate would you call if you needed to be bailed out of jail? Mm. Um, well, maybe Pooh because she has money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say <laughs> like anyone like, who has like the most amount of money, who has the most sponsors. I'm like, probably Pooh. Pooh's just going to roll up with her RV and her, with her oh, yeah. big wad of cash and be like, yeah, I got you, bud. Don't worry. You can sleep back here tonight. <laughs> I thought you'd go like, who wouldn't ask a question and just be like, yep, right there. <laughs> you know, I, maybe so she, she is. Probably wouldn't answer her phone. Honestly, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> that's like good. not a good call. Like I agree with that one. Shots, yeah, shots you wanna, again. <laughs> you want another, another choice? So you're sticking with this one. I like that answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you'd be you'd be there in a set too, Cax. I know. That. Oh, there it is. Aww. <laughs> okay. Who? Which teammate would you call if you got free tickets to your favorite concert? Ooh. Uh, gosh. I mean, maybe Mel Deroche. Yeah. Deroche yeah. from Montreal. <laughs> Cax has got one more for you. Yeah, I got one more. So, which teammate would you call um, to, you know, you go or you're watching Super Bowl Sunday? Out. Either you get to go or you take her. Sorry, Winston just bit me. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie, <laughs> he really he hears your voice and he wants in. Like he misses you, Jen. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Go to Super Bowl Sunday with yeah. Um. So yes, yeah, so I started. I have two fantasy football leagues. Like you're right now that I run. Um, Blair's pretty into the football. Like I feel like she knows a good amount about football. Jenner too. They'd be a, a good time to to bring. Nice, like it. I like it. Yeah, Blair Which, won our one league this year. She's Turnbull. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Her first her first win. Big football fan or first year kind of getting into football no, and football. beginner's luck. That's our third year in that league. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Cuddy won the year before. And I think I won the inaugural year. So that's amazing. Well, well Jen, <laughs> we appreciate your time so much here today. And honestly, I hope you'll come back and do it again because I know there's just so many stories to tell. Um, thank you for your time with us uh, from the PWHPA and SDPN. Tune in to episode four which will, of the Knox and Cag Show, which will be aired on Tuesday. And from all of us here, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for uh, being with us there, Jen. The Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out sdpn.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. She scores! <laughs>